name is Richard Young. I'm 80 years old, and when I was just a kid, I have recollections of being three years old and sitting on the floor of my mother's living room, drawing and coloring and painting. And I've painted all of my life. Always wanted to be an artist. So I went to school and got some training as well. And now I'm doing the thing that I've wanted to do all my life. Now, I've always wanted to be a, a, a gallery painter. And that was the way my education and my interests were focused at first. I particularly loved and did well my first university degree. I did uh, very well in portrait. Did some landscape, but mostly it was figure and portrait. Then, when I went back to school for a postgraduate program, I moved over into what I thought was going to be my career, more into fine art landscape. And then as I looked around the world, just a minute, I've got to get this stroke in here right. When I looked around the world, I saw artists as good or better than I'll ever be, starving to death. And I had a wife and a house full of kids. I needed something, a real job, that really paid off. So I switched my major, this is in postgrad now, switched my major over to industrial design slash architectural design. And that launched me into the career I've spent most of my time during my life uh, earning a living and building up some, you know, some uh, estate and so forth in designing and building customized commercial buildings for various kinds of companies. And that's, that's how I spent most of my time. I also did consulting work, art and design consulting, where I did both. Just now I've got to get this stroke before it dries. And this consulting work was mostly for some European concerns who were big companies operating hotels, restaurants, and so forth, and they wanted a special American look to them, and I was retained to do that. So I spent a good part of my career, about 20 years of it, going back and forth to Switzerland, to Germany, to France, doing this work for this, uh, uh, these, these various clients. Lots of host hotel, lots of restaurants, and mostly interior architecture. I had other projects that took me all around, took my work all the way around the world. I didn't have to go to Egypt, where I did a project, to Singapore, where I had to do a project, to uh, Tokyo, where I had to do a project, but I was very active in Europe. Berlin, did a nice project in Paris, and many in Switzerland, down into uh, northern Italy. I also had to go over to Austria, and I had a good following over there that kept me pretty busy for most of my 20-year architectural slash industrial design career. I'm not a lot different from other artists that were my contemporaries during my training. We had disciplines in our uh, schoolwork, both at the University of Utah and Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles, now in Pasadena, but my classmates were schooled pretty much in the same disciplines that I was schooled in. And their techniques and their abilities and, and their way of presenting a rendering or a painting, they're all the same, were very much the same. They're different now because the digital age has taken over. They don't, uh, there isn't much demand for an artist doing a rendering of a building anymore or of an interior, or something of that nature. It's all done, for the most part, digitally. And it's, it's good, but there's something about the artist and his soul, and his, the smell of the paint, and, the, and there's something wonderful about expressing oneself as a, as a designer and an artist with the smell of paint and the atmosphere of going out, for instance, this landscape here. This is all taken from on-site, or plain air as it's called, painting with watercolors. I bring them back, work them up into a larger uh, uh, you know, size, and I work here in my studio to fully develop them. But what makes my techniques a little bit different is people who once did a lot of 
illustration, tried to make it artistic, free and loose. Now those who do it by hand realize that they've got digital experts coming in at them competitively from everywhere and so they do these very, very tight, actually photographic representations in their illustrations. To me, that's a bore. I've got to put part of this, my training, my background, and my own level of taste, I've got to put them into my paintings, and that's what I do. This is an emotional expression, as well as an artistic, as well as one of deep concentration and real discipline. Doing originals, I was hoping I could sell them and enough of them to, to buy shoes for the kids. I soon found out that was tough to do and it takes years and years to do. I got an early start, even in my infancy, but by the time I got up through college, uh, into college and, and, uh, and, and, and prospects of having a career that was profitable, I realized that I did not have an awful lot of time to do a lot of freelances that were painting. I still painted. I kept my hand in. I sketch constantly. I have sketchbooks scattered all over this studio and my car and you name it. But the main work, my main uh, uh, fine arts work was done just for my own amazement, entertainment, and my own uh, training. I have found the very best training that I can get and the very best instructor that I have ever had is me. And when I paint, I learn. And when I do a painting and say, well, I guess it's finished, and put it aside and go on to something else, I will refer back to that other painting time and time again, because I will find passages or ways of looking at things in a previous painting, and I might go back sometimes years and say, oh, well, I see I did this then, and maybe that would work here. So I'm constantly building one upon the other. This painting started while I was sitting on my little stool with my wide brim hat and umbrella up in the mountains just east of my home. This is Alpine Valley, also known as Little Cottonwood Canyon in Utah. When they had Giverney, I've got Little Cottonwood Canyon. And I have been out sketching and enjoying the beauties of this area for years and years and years. This particular painting, like so many others that I've done and plan to continue doing, I go out and I do little watercolor sketches, pen and ink sketches, sometimes pencil, sometimes I go out with oils themselves and do sketches of various things. This painting started in just such a way. There is a valley up at the end, a little kind of a, 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 a coulee or a, a dead end of the Cottonwood Canyon and it's called Albion Basin. It is the most magnificent skiing in the world that I know about, and I've skied Europe, and I've skied here in Utah and California. Anyway, it's not only is it a marvelous skiing area, but it's very unique geologically. It is a glaciated valley, and centuries and centuries ago, it was all a glacier. And now, as the earth is warming and the climates are changing, this glacier sh is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Now, this glacier is left just a little snow field. Now, this is one of my on-site sketches. And the only thing left of this glacier is this little snow field. And I thought, I'm going to paint a farewell to that snow field. But even though the, the climate and the flora and the fauna are changing, sadly. I thought I'd capture and say a, a, a prayerful adieu to this little snow field. And therefore I worked this, this is a watercolor. I worked that watercolor up, as you can see, I squared it off to transfer it to this canvas. And that's how it all begins. Now, what makes this to me so alive and passionate and wonderful is this even though things are changing. This little snow field and other snow fields remaining of the great glacier that formed this canyon and filled up the Great Basin. Even though 
they have diminished. They still give off abundant, beautiful life. These hills become absolutely massed with uh, various kinds of flora, uh, ground cover type things, ferns, uh, and most glorious array of wildflowers in all colors you can imagine. So from a dying glacier, which is now but a snowfield, down to the present time, these will melt, trickle down, and run off, and they feed this marvelous natural garden of wildflowers. And that's part of what I was trying to convey in this, this portrait, the life and the abundance and the exuberance of nature, and that's what I've tried to capture in this particular painting. Thank you.